Good evening from Western Supermare, a town like many across the UK, inside the UK's highest level of weather alert. The heavy snow and freezing conditions are a threat to life across parts of southwestern England, South Wales and also the Republic of Ireland. Here in Western Supermare, the high winds have died down, but the snow is continuing to fall. Over the, the course of the last four or five hours or so since we've been here, we've got almost a foot of snow and it is drifting. Up to 50 centimetres, which is 19 inches, could potentially fall uh, in the areas around here, especially over Dartmoor and Exmoor. And that's predicted to be by the morning and this is compounded by the fact that the beast from the east has been coming uh, down at the east coast and it's being met from the southwest by storm emma well there has been a major dump across the country's travel networks which has caused chaos for those trying to be, travel on the roads and also schools have been closed here in western supermare and in many parts of the uk businesses closed early around half past two to allow people to get home safely we'll get more on that in news at 10 in a short while but first to our correspondents who are across the british isles in a moment we're going to hear from james matthews he's in scotland in the borders and also ian woods who's in ireland but first tonight's guys rebecca williams reports from here in somerset on a town that's warning lives are at risk. They said the snow would hit the southwest at 3 p.m. and it arrived on cue. A snow day for many, making the most of the weather. But here in Wellington, that snow soon turned into a fierce blizzard. It's extremely dangerous, so I tried to get back from Taunton earlier and siding all over the place. And people are still driving, which is just crazy because it's so icy and not nice out there. It's not normal, it's very cold and very deep, really, compared to what we're used to. I saw a lady earlier and she was, walked past my house and she fell, you know, and it was only at the you know, start of the weather today. So like this, yeah, don't risk it, don't go out. Here in Wellington, it's minus three degrees Celsius. This is in the heart of this red warning zone, which means that there is a risk to life. And in rural communities like this one in Somerset, many elderly and vulnerable people are likely to become cut off. Many still attempted to get through on the treacherous roads. As night drew in, good Samaritans were out in Taunton, rescuing people stuck in the snow, including me. We've just been down to the hospital, giving a few NHS people a lift home. Um, we're doing it for free because nobody likes to be stranded at work, really, do they? I need to start making your way towards Louth Hospital. In Lincolnshire, too, the calls kept on coming. Parts of the county were simply impassable. The RAF and army advisers were called in to help. Even our professional drivers uh, with their uh, 4x4s are finding themselves stuck on the uh, road network. Um, so every day it's, it's becoming worse and worse out there with the ice. The aim is to get doctors, nurses and carers to work. Senior aircraftman Nathan is on his second shout out. Linda, a mental health worker, needs to get to hospital. I couldn't get in at all yesterday. But this guy's coming to pick me up today, which is good. Whether I'll get in tomorrow, we'll wait and see. Lincolnshire's highest point, there's no chance of getting through the A46 at a standstill. And a similar picture in Rochdale. Oh, goodness me. This is horrendous. In the Pennines, a whiteout as hundreds of schools are closed again. And in Sedgefield, they made the most of it. Whilst the southwest has remained relatively untouched over the last few days, it seems Storm Emma has now met the so-called beast from the east, bringing with it treacherous conditions. Rebecca Williams, Sky News in Wellington. Well, the picture hundreds of miles to the north of here in Somerset is very similar. Heavy, heavy snow, icy roads and traffic sometimes being forced off the roads and entire communities being cut off. James Matthews has been to one village in the Scottish borders. For the horses, happiness was a roll in the snow. In the rural hamlet of Waterheads, weather stress is for the humans right down to clearing the ice from the water bucket. It's not the faint-hearted, put it that way. Nothing's on your doorstep and nothing's simple. So it just takes organisation. If you're not organised, then you will be suffering. We found waterheads on a trip to the Scottish borders. We passed the whiteouts, the neighbourhood path clearance and the gritters. And then we found Tim, hitchhiking from waterheads 
to the nearest town to find supplies for him and his neighbours. There's a few folk running out of milk and just essentials and things. Oh, Don't stop, stop. Yeah. Scotland's red warning spoke of rural communities being cut off. This was one reconnecting. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. When I grew up, we had no power for three weeks um, because we lived in a rural environment. But nowadays, it's not really an issue. I've got the internet. Fire lighters. Tim only recently moved from Darwin in Australia. The problem they had there was with cyclones. That sense of um, kind of being under siege is very similar, but the whole thing is, is, is yeah, very different. This actually goes on for a lot longer. For Tim's wife, Jill, this was the video link set up for an international conference in Edinburgh. People have travelled from all over Europe to get here and have battled through the snow and, uh, and made it, and yet here I am, 20 minutes' drive away, and haven't actually been able to get in. Scotland has stepped back into an amber snow warning, but it's still bad. We are several hours after the red warning in Scotland, but the very fact you can hardly see me lets you see why the authorities are still advising stay off the roads. I keep going. Scotland's First Minister has added to criticism of companies who put their heavy lorries onto the M80 in spite of the red warning, causing tailbacks. Hundreds of motorists were stranded, some for more than 12 hours. I left Edinburgh because it didn't seem so bad. And it, it, the first hour was fine. And then it's, it's just been chaos. It's been a while since they've walked huskies down Prince's Street in the centre of Scotland's capital. The day they can't, can't come soon enough. James Matthews, Sky News, in the Scottish border. Well, that's where the red alert has been and gone. But here in the southwest and in South Wales, they're not the only areas where the red alert is current. It's current, too, in the Republic of Ireland. There, it's due to remain in place until tomorrow afternoon. And also, the Prime Minister in Ireland has told people to remain indoors. Sky's correspondent, Ian Woods, has been finding out how people are managing on the east coast. For 24 hours, Ireland is going into temporary hibernation. The streets began to empty ahead of a 4pm deadline. Public transport, non-essential government services, schools, shops and businesses were all being closed down for safety reasons. People were told to stay at home to avoid what was likely to be a dangerous blizzard. The risk to life and limb presented by severe weather conditions should not be underestimated by anyone. We are facing severe blizzard-like conditions which will spread across the country from 4pm today. Winds of up to 100 kilometres an hour will persist with heavy snow and could result in zero visibility and whiteout conditions. Those stocking up before supermarkets closed agreed with the government advice to take no chances. If it helps people take it seriously, if it saves one life, it's done its job, so we can't underestimate the value of it. Batten down the hatches, uh, made two attempts to get to work in the last two days. It just wasn't happening. Do you think people will heed the warnings there to stay yes. inside? Yes, I'd say they will. What yeah. are you going to be doing? Uh, what will we do? Well, I'll be staying indoors, that's for sure. Plenty of work to be done. <laughs> Darver Castle hosts 200 weddings a year, but for the first time, the weather put nuptials on hold. With 130 guests travelling from all over the country, the bride and groom-to-be were forced to postpone their big day. Nobody likes to cancel a wedding. I'm 20 years here and haven't had a cancellation of the wedding. So uh, people are very upset, but they're doing the right thing. Uh, so people to get here, then they might be able to get home. And the victims of Storm Emma, Emma, and her fiancé, Chris. We were having a good laugh that it was called Storm Emma. You know? <laughs> and then we just sort of had to come to the decision that it, it was just best to postpone it for everybody. Um, it just wasn't worth the risk. The white wedding may be off, but the honeymoon will go ahead, flying to Cuba far away from this far from Emerald Isle. Ian Woods, Sky News, County Louth. Well, the red weather warnings stretch into tomorrow. Let's take a look at the latest advice that we've got from the Met Office. Well, these red warnings for snow and wind are in force for the southwest of England and southeast Wales while amber warnings for wind and snow cover parts of Northern Ireland, the east of Scotland, as well as the northeast and the south of England. 
and yellow warnings for snow are in place across most of the areas, including the east and southeast of England. Well, we have correspondents across Britain and Ireland. Sky's Ian Woods is in Dundalk in Ireland. James Matthews is in Edinburgh for us. Uh, but first, let's talk to Rebecca Williams. Uh, she's just further along in Somerset in Taunton. Um, Rebecca, we've seen hospitals in this area say only emergencies. Please now come in. And the snow really has piled up over the course of the evening, hasn't it? It has indeed, yes. The local hospital here has cancelled all minor operations. Uh, the temperature's here, minus four degrees. It's absolutely bitterly cold. Uh, the snow started coming down about three o'clock this afternoon. I was here a couple of hours earlier. There was nothing, and as you can see, it is now incredibly thick. Uh, it's caused a lot of disruption, especially on the roads. Uh, many people getting stuck in the snow and ice, and the worry now is that this snow has turned to freezing rain and of course that will make the conditions uh, even more treacherous in the morning. Hundreds of schools have been shut in this region and of course that very, very sad news that a young seven-year-old girl died in Cornwall in Loo earlier on today after a car crashed into a house in snowy conditions. Uh, on the roads, obviously, it, it is very dangerous. People being advised to stay inside unless they have to go outside. Also disruption at local airports in Bristol. There have been cancellations. Uh, also in Exeter, all flights in and out of there have been cancelled. And this is likely to go on until tomorrow. But, of course, we are in the heart of this red zone here in Taunton. Thanks very much, Rebecca. Uh, let's cross to our correspondent, Ian Woods, who's in Dundalk now. Ian, uh, we saw your piece as poor couple who've had to postpone their wedding today, but given the news about, about fatalities as well over the course of the last 24 hours or so, it, it seems that everyone's just having to put up with a bit of inconvenience. Yeah, and that couple were coming from Northern Ireland, and actually there's probably been more significant snowfall in Northern Ireland today. There's an amber warning uh, for counties Down and Armagh uh, throughout uh, the next few hours. And the significant snowfall there is from the original weather front that was coming from Siberia. What the red warning that was in place uh, by the uh, Irish authorities was uh, meant to address was uh, the Storm Emma front that was coming up from, uh, from the south. But that really hasn't arrived in any significant uh, form as yet. I mean, it's now six hours since since uh, every Irish citizen was effectively told to stay indoors uh, by the Prime Minister, uh, Leo Varadkar, but we haven't really seen any significant snowfall here yet. Now, the reason for that is simply it hasn't arrived yet. It has been postponed until later on uh, tonight, when most people were going to be asleep anyway, but the uh, emergency is now due to last until 6pm tomorrow, so almost a full two days of staying off the streets of Ireland. Thanks very much, Ian. Uh, sorry, just uh, managing to lose my earpiece in the wind here. Um, let's cross to James Matthews, who is in Scotland for us. Uh, James, you've had a few days of it now. It's pretty relentless where you are. How are people bearing up? Uh, getting through it, hunkering down because there is more to come, Jane, quite frankly. I mean, the snow's in the air, the wind is in the air, the wind chill is in the air. And, of course, what we're getting now is snow upon snow. And having been out... Uh, around the cities and in to, towards rural communities. I can tell you the, the snow is compacted on the roads. Gritters uh, have been putting the salt and they've been out and about on the major arteries. But there are, you know, main roads and cities and far beyond that haven't been touched. So this country north of the border will take some time to get back on the move. There is a plan tomorrow in place for NHS staff. That's been a problem with some outpatient appointments and operations postponed, particularly in the Glasgow area. I can tell you that appeals have gone out for 4x4 four four vehicles to help doctors, nurses and support staff to get to and from their shift. And the Far Scottish Fire and Rescue has helped out with that. So have the military. They are providing eight Land Rovers tomorrow to ferry medical staff to and from their work. 
James, thanks very much for that. Well, as families are right across the country, very sensibly, uh, are not doing what we're doing, they're not standing outside in the freezing cold, they're staying in and they're staying warm, which is the advice tonight. But that is causing another issue, and the issue is that the National Gas has issued a gas deficit warning about pressure on the system. Now, this is not expected to affect domestic supplies, but could affect heavy industry. Um, officials are trying to juggle the balance between supply and demand. So, guys, Tom Cheshire has been, is reported reports now on what's behind this shortfall. Keeping the lights and the heating on in the extreme weather, but only barely. The UK's energy infrastructure is struggling. Today, the national grid warned that the country was in danger of running out of the gas needed to keep our homes warm. In terms of demand curves and in terms of the situation we're seeing, it's the highest demand we've seen since around 2010 in terms of the tightness of the supply situation. Obviously, as we go into the weekend, we'd expect demand to start to decline as industry and some of the other large users come off, but we'll always be vigilant. It was the first deficit warning in eight years and the result of a perfect storm. Demand for energy is the highest it's been in the UK since 2002 because of the cold weather. At the same time, the whole of Europe is gripped by the same freezing conditions, which means everyone wants gas. And the cold weather has affected suppliers, shutting down some pipelines and operations. As a result, wholesale gas prices have soared to a 20-year high. Today, gas was supplying around a quarter of all the UK's energy needs, but especially for heating. Around 43% of that comes from platforms in the North Sea. In December, the main 40s pipeline to Scotland was shut, although the pipe has been delivering supplies since then. Liquid natural gas also arrives on tankers, but the last delivery was more than a week ago. Finally, 44% of our gas is imported from Europe, from Norway and from mainland Belgium and the Netherlands. An unplanned shutdown of a Norwegian gas plant has affected supply, and the Dutch pipeline has also experienced technical issues. Probably the biggest change that's happened on the, uh, on the, on the British market is the uh, decommissioning of a a storage facility called RUF, uh, which accounted for 70% of all storage capability in Britain. It's probably fair to assume that were RUF still operational, uh, we wouldn't be seeing prices um, at such high levels as we are seeing today. That lack of storage means the UK is a lot more susceptible to shocks. In December, when the 40s pipeline, which supplies this facility in Scotland, closed, it increased the burden. A deadly explosion at a gas facility in Austria the same month led to much higher prices as well. If you're at home, you should keep using your gas as you normally would. But the UK gas network is being pushed to its very limits. Tom Cheshire, Sky News. The inclement conditions are certainly going to be making the front pages of the papers tomorrow. The eye is coming already there. You can see its front page talking about the coldest snap for 27 years. Uh, it certainly feels like it here in Western Supermare. We'll be getting uh, that and all the rest of the papers looked at at 10.30 and 11.30 tonight with Anna and her guests. Uh, here in Western Supermare, the roads are now covered. Uh, the police have tweeted that all of the local roads now are pretty much impassable. They are urging people to stay off the roads, stay inside and keep warm. Seems pretty sensible advice to me. Back to you, Anna. Yes, go and get warm yourself, Jane. Thanks very much indeed.